Today is a very awesome, exciting day because the golf simulator is complete and I'm gonna give you a full demo on what it's like. Before we get to the demo, I have to tie up one loose end and that's what launch monitor I'm going with. And you can see here, I want with the SkyTrack unit. I found this, um, I've used this before at a friend of mine's house and we were talking, he was actually looking at upgrading to a different unit. So I purchased this one from him for $1,500. It's about a year old. Um, and that was a pretty good deal to me. So what we have to understand about launch monitor, what does this do? This actually gives us the results of our golf shot. So this is a high speed camera unit. It's looking at the golf ball and when we hit it, it's measuring how fast it's going, what direction it's going, and then also uh, how much it's spinning and which way it's spinning. So this is a photo type launch monitor looking at just the ball and uh, giving us a predicted flight of the ball based on it's, it's viewing that ball for this flight window basically. Um, the upgraded units such as uh, the Bushnell just came out with the launch monitor. Uh, GC Quad is, is the one in the industry for a long time that's like $20,000. It's also a high speed camera system but it's looking at the ball and the club. Uh, so this is quite accurate with the result of your shot but what it's not giving you is the club data. How square was your face when it came through? What was your club path? This is not giving it. We can infer that by the results of our shot with looking at the ball, um, but it, will, it does not read that directly. Now, to directly compare launch monitors needs a completely separate video series. Two main groups, radar, photo. This is photo. Um, so again, these are, are better for indoor because uh, they only need to look at the ball for a very short time here, right after impact. Those radar systems are actually measuring the ball as it's flying through the air and reporting back to the unit. Um, so over short distances, they can uh, be quite inaccurate. If you're outdoor and it gets to look at that ball for a long time, um, it's quite accurate in that. Um, there are some other ones uh, below this that just look at the club and based on club speed and how, where the face was pointed at impact, things like that, it will predict how the ball will fly. Uh, the one negative to that is that type of system is not going to give you differences on clubs. So if you want to try out a different uh, seven iron, a different driver, different balls even, it's not going to give you a proper comparison between those aspects. This will, uh, again, it's measuring how fast that ball's taking off. So if you get a driver that's maybe more forgiving or a different shaft, uh, you can evaluate those things with this unit because it's giving you the direct result of that ball. Um, so that's why I went with this. I want to experiment with different balls, uh, different clubs over time, things like that. You can do that with this unit. It's time for the demo. Let's get the hitting area set up. So all we have to do here is pull our curtains out. Break our screen down. We're ready to go there. And as an overview here on the components of your golf simulator, what do you need? You need an impact screen, something to hit into. Now, if you're not going with a projector, you don't need a screen. You could do a net. Uh, you need a hitting mat. So I've got here Country Club Elite hitting mat. You need a launch monitor, which I want with the SkyTrack. And if you want a view on your impact screen, you need a projector. Once we have our screen down and our curtains out, we got to turn on our projector and turn on our launch monitor. Now, one thing you'll notice with my system is that there are no wires, and that is 
a very, uh, I built it for that reason. I didn't want to have any wires. So our launch monitor is wireless. It connects to our whole house Wi-Fi. Our projector is wireless. It connects to our home Wi-Fi. And we can drive it all with an app on our phone. Um, so all we have to do is to get our image on the screen is mirror our phone. Can be Apple or Android. Mirror it on the projector and then connect it to the golf simulator. All right, so I've got my phone here. I'm going to go to iOS cast on the projector and then mirror my screen. So I go to screen mirroring, this projector shows up as an Apple TV device. So I just wait for that to connect. We've got my screen up. And I'm going to go to the SkyTrack app. And you can see that starts to load on here. Subscription fee for the SkyTrack. Go on their website, look at that. It's, it's as little as $100 a year, up to a couple hundred depending on the capability you want. Um, so the setup of this is pretty easy. We've got a device level down here. Um, so there's some adjustment screws on this metal case that I have it in and you can see I just set it on the concrete floor and we can adjust to get the roll and tilt to zero. There we go, they're zeroed up. There is a level on top of the unit to help you out with that. I found it's not exactly um, as accurate as that device there. Otherwise, you just want to line it up uh, basically perpendicular to, to your hitting area and the screen. Um, so I just eyeball that. There is an alignment laser you can use and put a stick down. Um, I just eyeball it. seems to be good enough. We're going to start. Most of my time I spend in the practice area, so that's basically a practice range. And uh, we'll start with that, and I'll show you what it looks like to use a golf simulator. So I'm just going to take a 9-iron here, um, I'm at the range. Alright, I just grabbed a 9-iron here, I'm going to show you what it's like. We're at the SkyTrack range. You can see down on the hitting mat, uh, the SkyTrack unit project, projects a laser dot on there, and that's where you place your ball, uh, so it has the correct view of it as you hit it. So it takes a second there, it gives us a shot path there. What that shot looked like, I'm still warming up, so that one was, uh, you can tell 104 yards, it gives you your launch angle, your spin, your miles per hour. Um, all the data that you need to dial in your game, pretty cool. Swung a little faster on that one. You can tell I hit a little bit further. You can see, made a difference. Hit that one a little bit harder yet. Squared up the face a little bit more. 130 yards on the 9 iron. So, you can see this is a powerful tool for Swing changes, it gives you data to evaluate what's actually happening. Um, the other cool thing it does um, for myself, um, I was a bit overestimating how far my clubs flew. So even if you go to the driving range without one of these, uh, you're kind of guessing between the signs and the targets of, of what distance you're hitting your clubs. This gives you a very accurate, probably plus minus two yards on how far you're actually hitting your club. So when you go to that 135 yard par three, um, you know exactly what club to hit. Now, whether you hit it good or not, that's up to you. Um, but this gives you a lot of data to help improve your game. And in my opinion, this is one of the reasons that the pros are always getting better and better. Um, the amount of data that they have with the launch monitors that they use really focuses their practice time and uh, gives them direct correlation between swing changes and the result 
If you get one of the higher end subscriptions to SkyTrack, it will also unlock the simulator portion of it, which means you can actually go play golf somewhere. So this is E6 Connect. I'm going to show you what it's like to play a round of golf here. So we can do stroke play. Let's go to Pinehurst number eight. So here we go. So just like any, you go to a tee box, you can uh, put your ball in a tee. This Country Club Elite Mat gives you two options. Um, there's a white insert there for tees, or you can just stick your tee into the turf grass. So we've got a 350 one yard par four here. Pretty much straight, a little bit dog leg left. I've got the driver out. We'll see how this goes and uh, play a hole here. <clears throat> All right, well, pretty straight. Did not hit that very well. Went 215 yards. It's a bit of an ego crusher when you don't hit things so well on here. Uh, it does not go as far as you want, but we're on the right side, just in the rough, and we've got a straight shot to the green uh, that is 142 yards away, um, slightly downhill. So let's say, let's say an eight egg. Felt like I pulled that a little bit. We'll see where it goes. Sure enough, I pulled it right into the sand trap. Just like we're at the course. All right, now I have to chip out onto the green, out of the sand trap. And uh, to simulate sand, obviously I don't have sand in here to hit off of. Um, over here, it uh, takes a power reduction for your hit chips out of the sand or hits. So you can see it's penalizing us uh, almost 75% for hitting out of the sand. So let's see how that goes. Get a sand wedge out here. We've got 30 yards to the pin. And it blasted right past it. Pretty good on the sand. <laughs> yeah. All right, I've got a comeback chip now. Definitely need to take some off of that so I don't rip it over the green. Much better. Almost made it. So you can set, you can uh, change different distances there on how far it will give you a gimme putt. I've got it set at a pretty generous distance. All right, now we've got a 552 yard par five. Let's see if we can get a better drive on this one. Pretty straight again, a little further this time. 246 yards, I'll take it, I'm in the fairway. But I'm gonna lay up with a four iron, hopefully get a wedge into the green. All right, I did not hit that very well, won 178 yards. But I'm again in the middle of the fairway. I'm not gonna complain too much. 130 yards into the pin. Caught that one a little thin, 
directly reflected that you can see there uh, went a little bit far I'm on the green but I've got a long putt so let's show you how putting goes set the ball down the same way on the little dot got my putter here we have a 77 foot long putt it gives us the correct line I can change this on my phone we can aim anywhere uh, but I'm just going to try to land it up there with the line that they give me. So the line was good. I was way short. Um, this gives you good practice too for obviously you can see I don't know how far I need to hit a 77 foot putt. Um, so this will kind of ingrain that in your mind if you've got those distances and can pace them off in the real world and translate how far of a backswing that is on your putter. I think that will help my putting. Um, I have not done a lot of that yet. Um, obviously I need some help on that. Alright we've got another par 4 here. Very tight, tight fairway. Let's see if we can rip another drive down there. Yeah. That calls for a ball again. Just like we're playing. on the range with my driver. Let's see if we can get one in play here. Again, not very far, but it's in play. 148 yards in, 28 feet up. We'll give a seven iron to rip. <clears throat> gave me a gimme. Although it gave me a three putt. I was in the middle of the green. All right, hope you liked the demonstration. That is the culmination of all my hard work here to get this golf simulator in. It is awesome. I wouldn't change anything at this point. Um, I love it, kids love it, going great. Um, I do have plenty of work left to do in the garage here, finishing the rest of the walls to make this space look as good as it does uh, back behind the screen. Uh, I got this wall done, so that's looking much better. When it all comes together, it will look uh, really nice, I think. Uh, as you can see here, Putting this in the middle bay of the garage, I've been able to keep the, the vehicles in during these cold winter months, not have to pull them out, still have space in the middle here. If you got any questions or comments about the setup, if you got any questions about the setup, put them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible or maybe even spur another video. Thanks for watching. Adios.